As the prolonged second year finally comes to a close, the final special exam, the year-end special exam, is about to take place. Each class will select three representatives, vanguard, middle guard, and general beforehand, and they'll compete in elimination matches against representatives from other classes. However, the contents of the exam will remain unknown until the fateful day arrives. I'll show my true strength to you, and to Sakayanagi. It doesn't suit me, but I'll defeat you fair and square. When the special exam has concluded, let's take our time over some tea. After defeating him, I'll face off against you, Ayano Koji, as a third year. Only one will survive, Ruin or Sakayanagi. Well then, if we both manage to avoid expulsion in the special exam, let's make some time for each other then. The long-awaited climax of the second year arc begins now. So going further into the details of the examination, each class must have three representatives and at least one must be male and one must be female. Some people think Ayana Koji was chosen to be the male representative, but I doubt it. It's probably going to be Hirata, but that's not where it ends. It also says that an optional number of substitutes can be designated in case a representative is absent on the day of the exam. So going further into the details of the examination, it also says that the vanguard will be given 5 points, the middle guard 7 points, and the general 10 10 points of life. The class that loses all of his general's life first will be defeated, and matches will be one-on-one -on -one with established rules. Okay, so let's start with Ayanokoji being the general. Okay, so apparently he wasn't originally gonna be the general, but when he did, it came with conditions. The first being that if Horikita won without needing Ayanokoji's help, he would promise to assist her in the future with all of his power. The second condition is that if Ayanokoji had to step in as the general to help her, he would not assist her anymore in the future, similar to what Koenji is doing. The third condition is that if Ayanokoji came out and helped as the general and they still lost, then he would assist Horikita with his full power for half a year. And when Ichinose smiles at him, he looks at her with a deadpan blank expression. That's still not even the craziest part. Later in the exam, Ichinose goes up against Ayanokoji and Ayanokoji tells her, that he has been manipulating her the entire time. And he also tells her that the person who exposed her for shoplifting wasn't Sakayanagi, but himself. Essentially just emphasizing that he was just using her the entire time. And because of this revelation, Ichinose breaks down and Ayanokoji beats her. So the reason why Ayanokoji did this was not only to win, but also because he's realized that Ichinose has changed and grown significantly, especially mentally, thanks to him. And so he wants to know if he reveals to her that he is not the savior that she makes him out to be, what will her response be and how will she function after that? Do you see what I mean when I said this volume exceeded my expectations? This is just 
insane. So does Ayanokoji not plan to transfer to Ichinose's class or is he just gonna be an asshole and break her heart and transfer to her class anyways? So the monologue begins with Hoshinomi saying that Shabashira is her friend as well as her rival. And even though she has a lot of friends, childhood friends, high school friends, Shabashira is the only person she feels like she can confide her feelings in. And we also get a bit of insight into her past where she shares that she didn't initially plan on becoming a teacher. It was in the past when Shabashira's decision caused them to not be able to graduate from class A and she saw that Shabashiro was determined to become a teacher, that was what influenced her to become a teacher as well. She says her sole purpose as a teacher is to prevent Shabashiro's dream of leading her class to class A from coming true. She thinks that Shabashiro is clinging to the past and is trying to make amends for what she did in high school by making her current class graduate from class A. However, Hoshinomiya is also clinging to the past and she's very bitter about what Shabashiro did, so she essentially wants to stop Shabashiro from achieving her dream as a form of revenge. And then she says something very drastic. She says that if her class loses in the special exam and Shabashiro's class goes on to class A, she will do everything in her power to stop that from happening even if she gets fired from the school. But let me stop beating around the bush and get to the moment that you've all been waiting for. Ruin versus Sakayanagi. The battle that everyone has eagerly been waiting for. The battle that will significantly impact the story regardless of who gets expelled. And the winner of this battle is... Nobody. Huh? I beg your pardon? Oh, excuse me? Yeah, so this was the aspect of the story that I was disappointed in because how this ended up happening is very complicated and unnatural and I just don't understand how this is the decision that Kinugasa chose. We don't have that many translations but I'll try my best to explain given what I have so far. So at first Ayanokoji visited Ruin and the purpose of this visit is that he wanted to advise Ruin to not play any dirty tricks in the special exam. He wanted Ruin to approach the exam head on without using any of his usual unorthodox methods. And apparently Apparently later on in the exam when Ruin and Saki and Naki were battling each other, Ruin didn't lose yet, he still had one life left but he admitted defeat, but at the very last moment, Hashimoto delivers a message to Saki and Naki from Ayanokoji, and Ayanokoji asks Saki and Naki to give up. Saki and Naki understands the message almost immediately, so basically Ayanokoji was telling Saki and Naki that he wants to battle Ruin in the third year, and if she defeats him now and gets him expelled, that will affect her battle with Ayanokoji because Ayanokoji won't battle her with his full determination. And after understanding this, Sake and Nagi forfeited the match, basically meaning both of them lost. But at the end of the volume, Ruin says, even though they both lost, there was still a clear winner and a clear loser. We also have some short stories that have been confirmed and they knew what they were doing by giving these specific characters the short stories. The first short story is from Sake and Nagi. The second short story is from Ruin. And the third short story is from Horikita. Now the first two I understand because obviously if we're gonna have a competition between Ruin and Sake and Nagi, depending on who wins and who loses, the short stories will expand their perspectives and give us some insight on how they feel about the outcome. However, the person that I'm most curious about is Horikita because why is she of all people getting a short story now? What I'm about to say comes directly from the translation. I'm saying that because I don't want you guys to think I'm adding my own spin to this or I'm trying to make it more dramatic. This is exactly what the translation says. As a matter of fact, let me turn the music off because we need full silence for this one. After Ayanokoji asked Hoshinomiya to give him another proposal, she says, Um, well, there are other things too. Something only I can do. Or something like that. Hoshinomiya sensei said as she reached out with her right hand and gently touched my ear. Oh, excuse me? So Ayanokoji says, are you going to clean my ears? And Hoshinomiya says, don't joke around, you know what I'm getting at, right? Hey yo, what the fuck? Hold up, wait a minute. I beg your pardon? Lock his ass up, lock his ass up. You're going to jail, you're going to jail. Police, help, police, help, police, help. So you're telling me, not only is she a certified loser, she's also a certified pedophile. Remember to like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe to the channel if you're new. And also sub to the second channel which is solely dedicated for Classroom of the Elite content. This is Chuni signing out. Take care, have a wonderful day, and goodbye. I'll make quick work of you in this final exam, and then I'll get my revenge on Ayana Koji. Huh. Don't tell me you think of yourself as a heroine or something. Let me make this clear. 
you're just a stepping stone for me, nothing more. And once this battle has concluded, I will be the one who's victorious. I will be the one to win, Ruin. With this special exam, I will finally remove this nuisance. You seem to have a deluded sense of confidence. Allow me to make you understand that you aren't the protagonist. Sadly, you won't be able to achieve your revenge. How unfortunate. I'll be the one who'll go up against Ayana Koji's class next year. Good morning. When I called out to her, she turned to face me and smiled. Good morning, Ayana Koji. Are you sure this is okay? Calling me out to a place like this. What do you mean? It's just, this is a public space, so if Kuruizawa or other people around see us, won't they get the wrong idea? To me, Sei is my best friend. To me, Sei is also a rival. It might seem contradictory, but surprisingly, it works. And having these two feelings coexist isn't so unusual, I think. Despite my appearances, I have quite a few friends. Friends from elementary and middle school, advanced nurturing high school, friends I met in college, and friends I made after becoming a working adult. But the relationship where I could really share my true feelings continued only with Say. I don't know what she thought about it. Even if I were to lose to anyone else, I just can't lose to her. We were in the same class, and the days we spent together aiming for class A instilled such feelings in me. Originally, Say didn't want to become a teacher. But on that day, the day she understood that she couldn't graduate from class A, I realized that she wanted to become a teacher and aim for class A again. That was why I decided to become a teacher too. Honestly, it's a profession far from what I want to do. Every day I'm disrespected by cheeky students and I can't expect much in terms of salary. Yet, I became a teacher. There was just one purpose, to eliminate all hopes from Say's dream, her goal of graduating from Class A. It makes sense, right? That day, because of Say's worthless feelings of love, I couldn't graduate from Class A. Otherwise, I wouldn't have become a teacher and could have had a more glamorous life. Yet, only Say gets to graduate her students from Class A, and she feels satisfied with herself, settling her past, I can't allow that. I'm still trapped by the past. So as long as I can breathe, I absolutely wouldn't let her win. If my class loses in the year-end special exam, if Say's class becomes class A, at worst, I would have to stop it by any means necessary. I don't care if I'm branded a failure as a teacher. I'm fine with being driven out of this profession. Even if it means dragging others down, I absolutely have to stop it. I swore that in my heart. The end of year special exam for the second years is about to begin. Depending on the outcome of this exam, the fate of my class, which has been pushed to the brink, would be decided. For me and my students, an important battle that we absolutely can't lose is about to begin. I can't afford to lose to say. I'm willing to do anything to prevent that. I see. So you don't care about your position as a teacher? Yes, that's correct. Then let me ask, what kind of reward are you prepared to offer? Anything that I can give you that's within my power. For example, I could provide information about the special exams that will be held for third-year students ahead of time. I asked with the intention of seeing just how far she would step out of her role as a teacher, but this was beyond what I could have imagined. Ordinarily, she would never say something like this even as a joke unless she was certain I wasn't recording her. If you're willing to go to such lengths, why not share this information with the class you're in charge of? Those kids are hopeless. They're too kind. They can't be tainted by evil. Even if I made such a proposal, they wouldn't be able to make use of it. They'd probably try to protect me instead. Even if Ichinose desperately wanted to win, she wouldn't easily resort to cheating. She would stop Hoshinomiya without hesitation, knowing it would jeopardize her position as a teacher. It seems she understands that much. Thank you for the offer, but the risk is too high. I must decline. Hoshinomiya probably didn't expect me to accept such a dangerous proposal. Then what kind of reward would you want? Can you propose something yourself? I don't have anything in particular, so I'm waiting for your proposal. Um, well, there are other things too. Something only I can do, or something like that. As she said this, 
She reached out with her right hand and gently touched my ear. Are you going to clean my ears? Don't joke around. You know what I'm trying to say, right? <laughs> Fortunately, there's no one else here right now. There's no need to put on a brave front. Even if you weren't able to achieve the goal you wanted, it's clear that you fought well. I sincerely expressed my support and gently embraced Horikita. Huh? Wait, what are you doing? Horikita tried to pull away, but I held onto her back and did not let go. There's no need to keep acting strong or facing everything alone. It's okay for weak people to lean on others and be supported. I've probably watched you more closely than anyone else over the past two years. I think I know all your weaknesses and strengths. Horikita seemed to try to argue, but couldn't find the words. The feeling of holding back, mixed with her warmth, was palpable. You have friends, Horikita. Don't forget that. <laughs>